Luisteraars, we zitten hier met uh, Watermelon Slim before he's going stage in Ospel and the Blues Festival. Uh, nice to meet you and welcome to Europe. Well, we always enjoy coming to Europe. Between you and me, uh, I would just as soon come here and find a way to stay. But uh, unfortunately, America has done what it's done in places like Iraq, and nobody seems to be really enthusiastic about taking in Americans right now. So I'm just, uh, I'm very pleased to be here, and I speak for my band, too. Well, we're uh, we're gonna judge you on your blues playing and not on what some adults presidents had did in the past. <laughs> exactly, uh, and, and I will tell you that Dick Cheney and George Bush gave me the blues, gave me enough blues for the rest of my life if I hadn't already had them. You had made a pre-career change a couple of years back because uh, 30 years on a truck and some other careers in the nice business, legal and illegal business, but now you have seen the blues and played from records. The company is glad with you and the audience. How you enjoy it on stage? Do you, do you manage it all? Uh, it, it wasn't that much of a change. Uh, the blues is work music and music of frustrated expectations. You don't always get what you want, as the Stones would have said. Uh, it's not that much of a change for me. I uh, um, I don't have any problem playing and singing for people that want to hear something that is real and played on real instruments. Uh, I, uh, I have been a journalist and so I write what I see, I observe and I write and, and these are what turn into my songs, whether I'm busy working at the time or whether I'm, whatever I'm doing, uh, I'm writing what I experience. If I'm correct, um, you're nominated for a couple of Blues Awards? Oh, I'm nominated for four more at this point. And that makes a total of 17 nominations in four years. Uh, that's, uh, but let me put that in perspective for all you Blues fans out there. Before there was anything like Handy Awards or Blues Music Awards, the reward for a blues player was that he had a pocket full of money after a gig and he had a place to sleep that night, maybe even had company, and most important, he had the knowledge that he had another gig for tomorrow night and that he would have the uh, place over his head the next night too. Okay, so it really doesn't bother you that you're nominated. It doesn't no, get your ego no, excited. It mean a thing. Uh, I, I, I am, I, I am grateful for being taken seriously. That's, uh, that's the ma the main thing. A man has got to be taken seriously, and I'm grateful for that. What do you enjoy more, playing live or uh, record a new album with your songs and your lyrics and your feeling of the music on recorded. What's well, here's the thing. Um, playing the music, as we will do tonight, is the easy part. The hard part is the transportation and the work that you have to do to get there. Back in the States, I figure for the last four years, I have driven six hours for every hour I played on the stage. Sometimes we would go as much as 1,400, 1,500 kilometers just to get to a gig. We spoke to Joe Louis Walker a couple of weeks ago and he said, I'm not a professional player, I'm a professional traveler. That's correct. And in between I play. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Uh, no matter what they pay you, uh, the main part of a musician's life is taken up in traveling. Uh, I have driven myself, I have driven Oh, uh, 100,000 kilometers a year over the last three years. Well, that's well great time to ride the blues in between. Where if you, you, you weren't a truck driver, you have your thoughts for yourself. You can that is, it is a good time to write. Uh, and when, I'm, when, I, when I was out as a truck driver, and, and now as a musician that has traveled 
long, long distances. Uh, I write a lot of songs that way. Travel is a big influence on my music. Who inspired you to play the blues? Which was a couple of standard questions almost. Which was the first blues record that you heard and said, that that's the music I want to play? I do, uh, as far as the record goes, it's, uh, that's, uh, that's hard to say. That, uh, that goes back in the 1950s and I could name half a dozen people that some of which you might have heard of and some of which you wouldn't. But I first heard the blues in my own house in 1954 in North Carolina, which was being so, uh, this is a story I've told a number of times to people. Uh, we had, as white middle class kids growing up in the South, my family was well enough off back in those last days of racial segregation to have what's called a maid, that's what we called them back then, who was a black woman that came and cooked and cleaned and took care of the kids, me and my brother. And she would sing John, what I later came to know was John Lee Hooker music while she was busy doing her work. And she'd go, oh my baby don't let me stay out all night long, and stuff like this, and she'd do it in the house and I didn't even know what that was. All I know was I liked the way she sang it. And later, quite a few years later, I heard the John Lee Hooker music that, that she was singing. And I knew that that's what that was. That was the blues. And I had been, I had been pooling around with it ever since I was a little kid. 